Hello and welcome to session eight of Programming from A to Z. In this session, I want to talk about and look at more deeply how to build an API using Node. So this whole course has focused on working with text, reading text, analyzing text, generating text. And most of the stuff, almost everything that I've shown you happens in client-side JavaScript. So let's talk about a little bit just generally what the difference is. So if you have a laptop that you're working on and it has a web browser in it, you might be running your P5.js sketch right there in the browser itself. So this is going to get you very far. There is so much you can do with just this. As we've seen, now you can do word counting and Markov chains and all sorts of projects. But there are some limitations here. So for example, let's just go back and think about word counting. So one of the things we did is, OK, so you have some text document. And you want to count how many times each word appears in that text document and visualize it in some way with your P5.js sketch. This will work just fine all client side unless, and <laughs> unless a couple of things. One is, where is this data coming from? If you have a little text file that you can put on your server, great. But what if this is, instead of one text file, what if this is 1,000 or 100,000 or 1 million? <laughs> one, I need the, the like uh, Austin Powers music, 1 million text files. You know, it's going to be kind of unreasonable to expect the client side, just your P5 just sketch in the browser, to sit there and churn through millions of text files for 10 minutes, a half an hour, and then produce the result. This is where server side programming can come in. And now, the platform that I'm going to use for server side programming is no is Node.js. Of course, there are a variety of ways you can approach server-side programming. So, okay, so there's a lot of pieces to this. So one thing that we've established is if you have a really large data set, perhaps server-side programming is going to help you. Here's another thing. What if you have users entering in their favorite words? And you're, or they're, you have your Mad Libs application, and they're entering words, nouns, adjectives, to generate stories. What if you want every time the user comes back to be able to see what they entered before? Or what if you want when a user comes, comes to the page to be able to see what everybody has entered? This is also so large. There's some reasons for server-side programming is large data set. Another one is persistence. And I don't know how to spell that. Persistence. <laughs> meaning saving data. And there's a variety of ways you can save data, but with client-side JavaScript only, while you can download data to that user's local computer, there's no way to save data across multiple sessions using a particular web application. So this server is a place where if we could send data to the server, it could be saved on the server in you know, what's known as a database. So these are some pieces to why you need server-side programming. Now, <coughs> here's another reason. <laughs> what if you want to expose everything, your data or your algorithm or the thing you're working on to other users as an API? This is another reason why you might want server-side programming. And this is mostly what I'm going to focus on in this particular week eight session, oh, session eight. However, I'm going to kind of look at all of these pieces by the time I get to the end of it. But this idea of maybe you have of this wonderful spreadsheet of all of this information about flowers. And you want to allow other people to make queries, go to flowerapi.com slash chrysanthemum or flowerapi.com slash sunflower and receive JSON back with all this information about flowers. This is something you're going to want server-side programming for as well. And this is going to be the focus here. Now there was one other thing on my mind and I'm trying to kind of come up with it. Uh, uh, API, persistence, large data set. Aha, I thought of it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say scraping. But um, and, and with persistence, by the way, could be kind of like user accounts and all that sort of stuff. But I'm kind of staying away mostly from like traditional web development here and looking at kinds of creative applications of this stuff. But I'm saying scraping because one thing you might have noticed is in P5.js, if you try to, the, the bane of your existence, 
might be this, this, is this thing called cores, or you might see it as like XML, HTTP request error. You might have tried to load image from some URL or load strings or load JSON. You get this error, I can't do it. Security, cross origin, resources sharing, not allowed, inaccessible, stop, stop, stop. So there's a lot of times where the client side for security, very good security reasons, is not allowed to reach to another server and request data. But your server-side program is allowed to do that. So your server, for, so for web scraping, for example, if you want to look at a web page, download all of its HTML, parse it out, pull out some things you want, you can do that from server-side and pass that to the client side. So these are kind of four reasons why you might want to use server-side programming. Number three being make your own API. This is where, in many ways, I want to start. Okay, so what are the pieces of this? The first thing that I want, so I'm going to make a bunch of videos, and they will eventually be here on YouTube for you to watch, or I don't know what the platform of the future is when YouTube goes away, but hopefully the videos will still exist. Um, number one, I'm going to sh talk about, um, for, I have a bunch of videos that I will um, link to in this playlist of kind of what is Node and what is NPM for Node Package Manager. So you need to install Node and get up and running with something called NPM first. And I already have the videos made for that, which I will reference and link to somehow. Um, but here I'm going to start with a Node package called Express, which makes building a web server, which is what you're going to need at its core. The web server is the thing that's going to pass information to the, your client, your P5.js sketch, or somebody else is making an API query. So we need to look at Express. Um, I want to look at saving data, and I got I have a, like a secret to tell you, which is one of the easiest way. I'm sure someone like I'm going to get struck by lightning for doing it this way. But to a, a really easy way to have a database is just save a JSON file, save a text file to the to the hard drive of the computer, and then load it every time the server runs. So I'm going to look at the simplest way you can have a database, and then some other more complex ways, maybe using a database system like CouchDB or MongoDB, and then something called Firebase, which is a Google product that allows you to just send them information. They save it for you. It can request it later. Um, I want to look at some point at scraping other web pages. So how could you grab an image and then pass that to P5.js or an HTML page and pass that to P5.js? Um, there's a lot of topics here about making an API. There's this thing called REST. I don't even know what that is, but we'll try to figure it out together. There's this thing called cores, cross-origin resource sharing, which I think I do know what it is. Um, and then I want to look at a bunch of different examples, mostly around working with texts to follow the theme of this course. So what if, you, what if you had the sort of big data scenario where you need to load massive amounts of text and you want to pass to a user uh, word counting info, you want to pass to make an API for word counting information. Um, so that's something that I'll look at, as well as some, uh, I want to build an API for sentiment analysis using this um, AFIN 111 uh, list of words. Um, and I have a couple of examples that use uh, n of um, that use a node package called Node Natural, which is another text analysis, uh, natural language processing um, node package, which has a lot of great features, and I'll show you a couple of them uh, here. So I'm going to get started in the first next video. You know, this isn't the order that I'm going to go in. I'm really going to focus on uh, working with Express, setting up this idea of an API, and then see if I can transition that into a simple sentiment analysis. Sentiment analysis API. Um, and we will see how that goes. Okay, see you next next video.